Hi guys, and welcome back to yet another practical Rhino jewellery cut tutorial. I'm Jack, and in today's short lesson, I'm going to show you one way that you can hollow out the inside of the head of a signet ring. As well as the how, I'll also be explaining the why, breaking down my decision making process along the way. With the introduction out of the way, let's get stuck in. So let's begin by first opening our existing model. So we'll go to File and Open and we'll find our pre-made signet ring file. I'll put a download link in the description of this video so you can download this and work on with me. And with that selected, we click Open. Now how essentially this is going to work for the hollowing is we'll create a copy of the top part of the signet, scale it down, and then Boolean difference in it from the inside of the head to create a cavity. Now that's relatively simple. The hard bit is working out how small to make the scaled objects so we have our desired wall thickness. So let's start by taking some lines from the existing ring which will then offset. And from there we can create a scaling template. So to get our starting curves we're going to use the section command. So I'll make sure I'm active on the curves layer and then we've got grid snap and ortho enabled. And I'm going to maximize the top view and type in section. It's asked me to select object for section, that's obviously the ring head. Enter. Start of the section. Start somewhere to the left on the outside of the signet then somewhere to the right, and that will give our horizontal section. And then we're going to start somewhere just above the head of the signet and just below, and that will give us our vertical section, then we press enter. So if we just have a quick look at that in perspective, you can see that if I turn the signet layer off, we've got a cross section in both of those axes. Now we don't need all of these curves, just the outside ones. So I'm going to shift click both of these to select them both at once, then click explode. Now let's delete the inside lines, these baselines, and the baseline here. Now these are now separate curves, so don't forget to drag a box around them and join them back together so we've got two open curves. Now to offset. So let's first go into the front view. Click on our curve, type in offset. Now I want the thickness of my signet wall to be 1.3 millimeters, so I'm going to type 1.3 and then I'm going to make sure I click inside my line. So now we have a 1.3 millimeter offset from the external. Now let's go into my right view and we'll do the same thing. Click this curve. We can just press enter to repeat the last command or type in offset again and make sure we click inside. Now this curve here doesn't quite meet the bottom or line up with the bottom of these two uh, curve ends here. So I'm just going to turn my signet back on Go into wireframe, and we're going to type extend in the command line. For my boundary object, I'm going to choose the existing ring, press enter. Now I can turn this layer off, click on the bottom of the line here, and the bottom of the line here, and it's now extended these lines to where they hit the inside of the signet ring head. So now with that, you can see we have our template formed. So let's turn the signet layer back on go into the front view, change our viewpoint to wireframe, then I'm going to select the signet ring head, go to transform and copy. My point to copy from should be a mid snap here at the top, there is, and then we'll go to the mid snap below on the offset line, and we press enter to finish copying. Now this copy I'd like it to be on a different layer, so I've made that for you, so if we go to the cutter layer on the right here, while that new object is selected, right click cutter, and then we're going to choose change object layer and that's now put it onto the orange layer. Now we need to scale it down so it fits within the red lines. So let's turn off our signet layer, select the orange cutter, then we're going to go to transform scale three dimensional, so 3D. The base point is the mid snap here at the top. Now make sure you've got orthographic on. I'm just going to bring my mouse somewhere to the left Actually, we need to turn grid snap off too, so let's turn that off as well. So I bring my mouse somewhere to the left. I'm going to click here, it doesn't really matter where. Then move my mouse to the right, and you can see it starts to scale the, uh, the cutter down. I want it to just about line up with that red line. It doesn't have to be really, really accurate, as long as it's near enough. So once I'm happy with the placement, I left clicked, and that will apply. So if we just zoom in here, you can see that it fits within our internal offset curve. Now let's go into the right view. So we can see here we're a little bit too wide. So we need to scale this in one directionally. So let's go to transform, scale, 
1D this time, so we're just going to squeeze it. Object to scale is obviously the cutter, so I choose that and press enter. Base point, again that same mid snap in the center here, or in the middle, left click. Again, somewhere out to the left, doesn't really matter how far, left click, and then we pull in until the wall of our signet hits the end of those two red curves, like so. And now it's scaled. So let's go into perspective, turn on our signet layer again, and let's spin it upside down, look inside. So we can see it's going to cut fairly nicely here, but leave a bit of a messy boolean on the shoulders here. So I'll just do a quick boolean just to show you that, which we'll undo. So I'll type in boolean difference, choose my signet, enter, choose my cutter, enter. So you can see it leaves a bit of an ugly finish here on the inside. So let's just undo that with Control Z and go back into the front view. I'm going to change the shaded, I think. And then I'm going to click on the cutter and we're going to transform it to pull those shoulders away from the inside of the shank. So we're going to do the cage edit. So I'm going to type cage edit, enter. We're going to choose bounding box on the list, world for our coordinate system. And now we're going to change the uh, cage parameters from the standard. So I've changed mine to four, four, but three in point count. And then we've got three, three and two in degree. So make sure that your cage parameters match mine and press enter. Region to edit, global. And then this will bring up the control points of the cage. So to squeeze just the bottom in without affecting the top, I'm going to drag a box left to right that fits the bottom row of control points in and release. So I go into perspective, you can see it selected the whole bottom row. Then we're going to click once on the x-axis scale handle, that's this little red square on the left, click once. And then I want to scale that by 50%, so I'm going to type 0.5 for a scale factor of 50% and enter. And you can see then that it's nicely curled the cutter away from the inside. So we can press escape to turn off the control points and then delete the cage because they're no longer needed. Let's roll it around again so we can see the inside of the head. And now we'll try Boolean difference again. So I'm going to type Boolean difference, enter, subtract from the green signet ring top, enter, and with the orange, note that I've got delete input equals yes selected, so it removes the cutter when we do the difference. And then we press enter, and there you can see we've got a much neater head offset on the inside. And one last little thing that I'd like to do is to try and remove this sharp edge on the inside so it's smoother on the inside of the head so it's easy to polish and also hopefully minimize any um, bubbles forming in the casting. So we'll do that just with a fillet edge. So I'll go to solid, fillet edge, fillet edge. I'm going to set my radius at 0.75, enter, select the inner edge, enter a few more times, and then it will nicely add a little radius or fillet onto the inside, and now our hollowing is done. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful, guys. If you've got a question or a comment, drop it in the comment section and I'll try my best to respond. Well, thanks for watching. If you'd like to inquire about booking online rhino training with me, just drop me an email. The address is in the description. And if you appreciate the free lessons I'm creating, you can say thanks by treating me to the price of a coffee via buymeacoffee.com. Just click on the link in the description. And finally, don't forget to subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss my next video. See you next time.